Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is July 3rd. The year is 2023, and this is a special YouTube premiere, which means I'm here with you in the live chat. Do me a favor and log in so that we can chat with you and I can answer your questions here. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a fun fold birthday card that's extraordinary, and it has a flap. It has a top lift and best of all, it is one piece. Now, in addition to the card I'm gonna demonstrate for you, I have two other samples to share with you with different orientations and ideas. You're gonna to wanna to make sure too that you stick around and grab that free project sheet. It's gonna be linked down for you in the video description when tonight's premiere is over, so make sure you grab that. That's gonna have pictures, cutting dimensions, and the supplies for all the projects you're going to see tonight. And I talked a little bit about chatting with us, whether you are here watching the replay, thank you, or you are here with us for the premiere, thank you. We love to interact with you. So log into your YouTube account, which requires your Gmail address. I am here, like I said, right now in the live chat to answer your questions. And I wanna take a minute to introduce you to Grace Hudson. You'll see Grace's name here in blue off to the side. She's here moderating with me tonight since Gina Hawley is on maternity leave. All right, we're ready. Let's go ahead and let's get started. I'm gonna move those buttons out of the way and I'm gonna start with basic white cardstock. Now this is actually the base of my card, which is unusual. I typically use a colored cardstock. Now because of the cutting and scoring tonight, I'm gonna to use a pencil on some of this and then I have a pretty one that's all ready for you. So I'm gonna begin with my paper trimmer. And you're going to be able to find this trimmer and all the products I'm going to share with you tonight over in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. There is a light blade for scoring, a dark blade for cutting. They navigate up and down out of the way on that clear track, and we're going to love all these features tonight. This does extend past 17 inches, so if you're a scrapbooker, we've got you covered as well. And I love that it has a protective coating here on the surface. Now, I know you've got a little bit of a glare there on the screen, so bear with me. We're gonna open up the flap, and we're gonna start by scoring in two directions. Now, the first one is at five and a half inches. Now, if you're like me and you struggle with getting things straight, there's a ledge here at the top of the trimmer. There's also one at the bottom, which ensures your paper is nice and level. Now, before I go ahead and I do that, I'm grabbing my favorite craft pencil, which I have linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. This is not a Stampin' Up! product, but I do have it linked for you because so many of you love it. The lead is very soft and the eraser is a champ. So I'm gonna start by making a pencil line here and I'm gonna travel with the blade. Now this is gonna make more sense in a few minutes. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna turn this now in the other direction and halfway is four and a quarter. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a pencil mark for you and then we are going to score. Now I know part of this is off your camera view, so just bear with me here. What we're going to do now is we're gonna do a little bit of trimming. So I'm gonna bring the blade up by lifting up that track so it's all the way at the top. I'm gonna line up the right hand side of my cardstock at three quarters of an inch. Now I love this trimmer for the simple fact that those smaller cutting dimensions are on this side as well as this side. So that gives you a lot more paper to hold here as you're navigating them. So again, with that ledge at the top, I'm gonna to line this up at three quarters of an inch. And we are going to cut, and I'm gonna draw for you first, I just decided, from here to that score line. I'm gonna show it to you. So we're gonna cut from here to here. So again, I'm gonna bring that blade up and I am going to cut. Now, if you're wondering how do I know how to stop, there's a little mark on this blade that you cannot see on the camera that indicates the stopping point. It gets you pretty darn close. Now I'm gonna move over and slide to the five inch mark now on this side of the paper, which is gonna be the left side. So five inches is there. I'm gonna move that blade out of the way and I'm gonna draw that pencil line first. We are going to cut here. Remember that was that half center mark here. So let's bring that blade up and let's cut right over that, which is the five inch down to the score line. And I like to lift it and look that looks pretty good. Now I move that blade down so it's not in my way. And what we're gonna do now is we are in essence gonna cut away this. So I'm gonna turn it. And you're gonna find that that pencil line, remember, was at halfway. So that's five and a half inches. So I'm gonna line that up here. 
and I'm bring my blade up. And remember, we're cutting this whole quadrant off. So I'm just cutting all the way down to here. You can kind of feel it. Now, if you're not sure if it's connected, you can kind of take a little bit of a cheap peek. And I'm gonna come up like this. Now you can see I missed a little tiny mark there. Don't worry, you'll probably do the same thing. We're gonna use our scissors, don't rip it. Now what I'm gonna do is navigating the blade down because we're gonna cut away this area here, this little section. We don't need this here at the bottom of your screen. So I'm gonna cut up to here and I am going to cut. And I'm just looking to see if I'm nice and close and I am trying to keep my head out of your camera view. And again, because I don't want to get my head in your camera view, I've got a couple little areas I'm going to snip. And you're going to probably have to do that at home too, so don't worry about it. I'm grabbing my paper snips. And again, don't pull and rip. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to give that a little bit of a snip right there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm just going to cut away the excess. And it's a, such a small amount. Now I know this isn't pretty because it has all those pencil marks on it. But when you're all done, it's going to look pretty like this without the pencil marks. What you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to grab your bone folder and we're going to crease up on this. So this is that half inch score line for the paper. That's going to make the actual card base itself. I want you to line up those edges and we're going to go over that with the bone folder. If you're like me and you're using a trimmer with a nice sharp blade, you might notice a little slight raised edge here. Let me give you a fantastic tip. If that bugs you, take your bone folder and go right across it, and that's going to help push that paper down. The flap now comes down like this. This is such a great card. One piece and not hard to create. All right, now it's a matter of decorating and some great ideas for you. Now let me push this off to the side. I'm going to grab some scratch paper here from my drawer because we're going to do a little bit of an abstract background here, and I thought this was kind of fun. Now I've got several strips already prepared, but I'm going to do one with you because it's repetitive. And I am using the stamp set called Sweetest Cherries. It's really cute. And I love the fact that you can make your cherries in various colors. And I have seen where you get really creative and you can turn this into a shorter stem with an apple. You can even go further with that. But we're using this crosshatch pattern here right now. And I've got that mounted. You're going to notice it's a clear stamp. It's photopolymer. Now you might be wondering, why is it red? Well, pink. You're going to notice that photopolymer will pick up the pigmentation of the ink. It does not hurt the stamp. You can still clean it with no problem, but it does hold that pigmentation. Make sure you clean your stamp, but you'll notice even though it does turn a funny color from those pigments, it doesn't harm the stamp or carry the color over. Now I'm using tone on tone because I want that subtle color difference here. And this is Parakeet Party. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that. Now I'm going to ink this up. I like to travel all over my ink pads because there's ink in those corners as well as the center. Now I'm going to stamp right here across that strip. I'm going to ink it up again, but this time I'm going to go vertically. And I'm looking through the top to try to do the best I can to align them. And let's do one more and it's going to go horizontally. Okay, so now we have that strip here. Just a tip for you, if you're like me and you love to stamp and you hate being steered away from it, I take off that excess ink on my scratch paper before I clean it, which of course is just off camera here with you. That keeps me from having to stop what I'm doing to go rinse out that stamp and scrub, or maybe in your case it's a chamois because it's gotten kind of muddy. So stamp off that excess ink. So I did that once, as you saw, but I did several others here, and I did two more in red. So this is a total of five panels. Keep in mind, you can change up the colors to go with any stamp set that you've got. Now I'm gonna move that off to the side and we are gonna to begin to work here on the card base. Now intuitively, you may look at this and say, wow, this is so cute, it's gonna to open to the top. But I thought, you know what? Let's do this a little bit differently. Let's turn it horizontally because I wanna give you lots of ideas and I've got other samples to share with you. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet. I love this when I'm crafting because Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means I don't have to fight a sticky spot the whole time I'm crafting. We are going to open up this flap and we are going to build the panels on here. The very first one is probably going to be what I call the mapping for how all this is going to fit. And I left a very small margin of that white cardstock showing here. 
I'm going to suggest if this is your very, very first time that you go ahead and you take your pieces and you kind of line them all up to get an idea on where they're going to need to go. So you can see you're gonna to need to shimmy these. So here's my next tip. Let's start with this one to create the mapping, which is at the top. Now, if you feel that you're not safe starting at the top, start at the bottom. Remember, this is gonna go horizontally, so it's gonna be visual side to side. I'm gonna flip this over here on the silicone craft sheet, and I am adding my, oh, and I'm trying to add my stamp and seal plus. You can see I'm pushing too hard. This adhesive is extremely strong. So if you're having a rough day <laughs> and you're pushing too hard, it's gonna to wanna to rip up your paper. I love this adhesive because of its strength. Now, if you're like me and you don't do too many things straight and you find it more comfortable to turn the cardstock this way, straight up and down, by all means do so. Again, I'm looking to leave a very small margin at the top and I'm looking to align the left and the right sides of the cardstock. And once I have that where I want it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tack that in place. If you're not sure, go ahead and open up that card base. Next, we're going to skip all the way now to the bottom. Now, I know that seems weird, but it's going to work out very, very well. So we're going to add that next panel here, and we're looking for that same amount of space that we left here. Because what we can do then is we can actually shift the other panels so that they'll fit better. So let's go ahead and let's look at the top and then let's align the bottom as closely as we can. And I can see I cut my panels just a smidgen short. Do you see that? It's going to bug me. I'm going to be really honest with you. Do you see how there's a little extra white cardstock here? If this bothers you like it bothers me, when I'm all done, I'm just going to take this inside my trimmer and I'll actually just trim that off before I mail it. It's not going to be noticeable once the cards close because obviously the base is the same color. So now we're gonna come over to the real red. We did that same exact background and I'm gonna add my adhesive. And I can tell already my adhesive is probably gonna run out because I'm getting near the end, but we'll change that together. Once again, I'm gonna go horizontally. If you are not certain, lay it gently so that if you have to jury-rig this a little bit, you can. Again, left and right, leaving a little bit of a margin there. And I am going to skip down here now to the bottom because in the center then I can gauge where it needs to go. So again, a little bit more adhesive on the back. And as I've said, the Stampin' Seal Plus is very, very strong. So I don't have to go crazy when I adhere it. I'm looking to leave that same margin in this section here the best that I can. And we'll tack that down. Now, before I go too far, I'm gonna look and I'm like, okay, that's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And visually is what you're looking for. No one's gonna break out their ruler when you send them a card just to make sure every single panel section is exactly the same, I promise. So I'm aligning the left and the right again, trying to keep spaces at the top and the bottom of this panel as equal as possible. And then we're just gonna press that in place. This then is gonna come over the top and we're gonna work horizontally. I'm gonna push that off to the side because I'm gonna work on some decorative pieces next. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to bring in some scrap basic white cardstock here. And this is where I'm going to do my stamping of my cherries. The reason I'm using a small strip is because there is a coordinating punch to the stamp set that's sold separately. And it's called the Cherry Builder Punch. You'll see it here. You're going to use these punches upside down so that you can navigate. But you might be thinking, well, goodness, how is that all going to work? Well, this is why it's called the Builder Punch because you actually have four punches in one, which makes it really cost effective. But if you're like me and you're not sure what direction to stamp those images in in order to get them out the easy way, let me show you what I did. Inside my stamp case, I keep what I call a punch template. So this is just a three by three square piece of cardstock. I slid it through the top of the punch and I punched it out to create a negative. I keep it inside here to help me gauge the direction the stamp needs to go in so that I know which way to stamp it. Now I'm going to leave this slightly off camera so that you can see it. I'm going to move that punch as well. And we're going to come in now with that real red ink pad. Strips of cardstock, and this is about one and three quarters inch for the cherries, is going to work best. This is going to allow you to eliminate as much waste as possible. I'm going to ink up my cherry. And I'm gonna travel once again, because I know, just like you, I have a tendency to gravitate to the center. So we're gonna stamp one here, and then we're gonna do another. Now, if you're thinking I missed on that stamp, I did not. It's actually textured just like that. 
in the stamp set on purpose to give it some texture and realism. And let's see if I can squeeze one more in here for the last one here. Now I'm cleaning that off camera because we are now going to switch over because we need some more components, don't we? Next, I am going to use Early Espresso ink and that is going to be for my stems. And here is the stem. So I'm gonna ink this up. Looking at my template, I can see this is gonna go in the punch on a slight angle. So that means that I can actually compensate for that now. So I've got one here, I've got another here, and another one here. And I'm leaving space between them just to make sure if any of that builder part touches it, I'm gonna be safe. One last step because my cherries are going to need leaves and that's even a smaller strip yet because the leaves can be manipulated in this punch and I'll show you how. So I'm reaching off camera for both the vein and the leaf. Now I'm going to show you that we are going to start with the vein first. I'm gonna ink that up and I can tell by looking at that template, this is gonna go on a slight angle. Then I'm gonna take the leaf and I'm gonna ink that up and you want the thick part at the bottom of that vein and we're gonna stamp that here. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and you can leave some space between these and you can stamp extras and then fill in your veins. It doesn't really matter which goes first, the vein or the leaf, it's entirely up to you. All right, I'm gonna clean those off camera, get those out of the way. Obviously, I punched a few more of those, but you get the idea. But now we're gonna bring in the magic of the punch. Now you're gonna notice that these two leaves are not going in the exact mirror direction. So one's going down and one's going up. This is where the sliver of cardstock works to play because you can manipulate this. But do you see what I did here? It's not gonna work. So let's work on this side. So work from the opposite end that seems intuitive. So I'm gonna do left to right, just like you would read. Once you get that cardstock aligned where you want it, tip for you, lightly squeeze your punch. That locks this cardstock into place. And let me squeeze that one more time so that it's in place. There we go. Now it's locked and now we're gonna punch it out. Now, with a builder punch, you're gonna have some small scraps, but I'm gonna go ahead and put those off to the side. Now that you've seen how the leaf is done, Let's come in and let's do one of those stems. Again, if you stamp them too close, you're gonna to wanna to work on the left-hand side. This fits in here beautifully. So just twist and turn the cardstock until you get it to your liking. Lock it in place by giving it a squeeze, and then you can punch out your stem. I'm gonna take those other pieces off camera. Now we're gonna work on the cherries. These are gonna gravitate here to the bottom of the punch. Look for that really pretty white border. Again, lock it in and then punch out those pieces. I just scoop all these up and I just toss them in the trash. All right, now that you've seen how this works, let's go ahead and let's work on putting this together. Now, because I thought this was a bit white, I decided to add a layer to this. So I cut a piece of Parakeet Party cardstock, which is the same color that's here. This is going to go here. So let's go ahead and let's flip that upside down and we're gonna go ahead and add our adhesive now to the back side, and I can't wait for you to see these other samples. This is going to get placed here. There is a very narrow margin. Now, my project sheet for you is free. It's going to include all the cutting dimensions and supplies and photos, various photos for each of these cards. So you can manipulate those instructions however you'd like to create your own panel. Now here is where I'm going to build my image, but I decided I wanted to add a greeting to this as well. Now this same stamp set includes a really fun phrase. It's called sweet. And the one thing I love about this is that you can actually build your own phrase. So you can use the word sweet in front or behind these greetings to create personal sentiments. So I'm gonna use the early espresso ink because we've played up quite a bit of that parakeet party and real red. I'm gonna ink this up. It's a nice juicy pad, so it's gonna be nice and dark. I'm gonna work up here at the very top. Here comes my head, because I wanna to try to get as close there to the right as I can, because I wanna leave room for those cherries. Now you might be wondering why I decided to make this card horizontal versus vertical, which is more intuitive. And the reason I did is simply because I knew the word sweet wouldn't fit this way. So change the orientation of your cards to make them friendly for you. Now I forgot to take out the word friends, so let's do that right now. 
I'm going to go ahead and I am going to grab a clear block right here off camera. And I like to leave my stamp face down on the table and then just press my block onto it. I'm going to ink that up and this is going to go underneath. And I'm afraid I'm going to get my head in your camera view again, so bear with me if I do. I just want to try to get it as centered as I can. Yeah, we're just going to go for it. There we go. And then we're going to lift. So they're a little close, but it's going to work. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Now I'm going to work now with the pieces that we've already created. And I'm going to bring those back in here so that you can see them. So we've got our stems, of course, and we have our cherries and the leaves. Now the first thing I'm going to do before we get too far is I'm going to attach the cherries and the stems together, but I'm not going to do probably what you think. The silicone craft sheet is going to be fantastic for this because like I said, liquid glue will not stick to it either. So here are my two stems. Intuitively, you're going to want to put this very much like a realistic cherry by putting this here, which is what we're going to do on one of them. Now you might be looking at that glue bottle saying, well, where did you get that? Well, I'm going to tell you all about this. The glue actually holds the multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store. It comes in the container looking like this. The tip on here is way too broad for these little tiny things. So I actually put the glue inside these precision tip glue applicators. Not a Stampin' Up! product, but because they aid me with my paper crafting, I have linked them for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. This is a game changer, you will thank me. This one's going to be a little bit different. This one's actually going to go behind. So I'm going to put a little tiny drop right here at the bottom to hold it. And again, working on that silicone craft sheet, which I love. Let's use that take your pick tool to my advantage. I'm going to lay that down. And this is now going to go behind here. This is fantastic because as I press, some of that glue may ooze out, which means it would get here. But this is going to eliminate it from sticking here. Now, once these are dry, we are going to place them on top of here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and let's adhere these here because I'm going to elevate those. So let's flip that upside down. Let's use that adhesive one more time. I am nearing the end and I'm thinking if it happens on camera, I've got my refill nearby so we can do that together. Looking to center this again the best that I can. And then once I'm happy with that, we'll go ahead and we will tack that in place. Now we're going to finish building. So my very first cherry here, I'm going to lift that up and I am going to grab my full size dimensionals and we're going to place one of these on each side. We're going to remove the paper backing using the take your pick tool attachment. Can't live without that. That's like my third hand. And we're going to work towards the lower bottom quadrant here. Now on this side, I want to show you. We're going to overlap these a little bit so that stems come more realistically here to the top. So I'm going to want a dimensional on this side and just a little bit of adhesive on this side. We're going to take off that backing. That's quick and easy. And now I'm just going to manipulate these so that the stems are relatively close together. Again, making sure that they don't impede on my words. They look good. Now we're going to add those leaves. And for me, I decided to go ahead and use the dimensionals for that because I want to go ahead and just add a little bit more 3D and texture to this. So we'll remove those backings to here as well. Now where you put these is entirely up to you, but they're going to serve double purpose. Not only is it going to be decorative, but it's going to hide the top of the cherries, which one of those is actually the bottom of my stem, isn't it? And the other one is actually going to be a, just a decorative element to finish off the top. Now, we're going to talk about the inside in just a second, but before we go there, let's talk about embellishments because I can't live without them. I have fallen in love with this four pack of tinsel gems. And while I do not think that that's going to turn up on camera, there are little flecks of tiny tinsel inside each of these, which makes them perfect for all kinds of cards. And I think they work especially well for masculine cards as well, because they're not too shimmery. Now these have glue dots already on the back. So I'm going to just pick those up with my take your pick tool and place those here. Let's bring another one up here off to the side so that we can have our eye kind of gravitate all over the card. This now is going to flip open one piece. Don't you love that? It's a fantastic fun fold. And now here you can see it's very, very plain. Now, while you might want to stamp directly on here and that's okay, I took it a step further with those punched out cherries and stems. Do you see them here? 
From the same stamp set, I took the words birthday wishes in the early espresso ink, and I'm just gonna layer that with some adhesive on the back. I did add a layer of Parakeet Party cardstock here. Again, all those cutting dimensions are for you in that project sheet. And then I am going to center this. This is going to have that same narrow margin on the inside as we did on the outside, just for some continuity to that card. This folds down. This is going to fold close. Isn't that adorable? And I love it. Now wait until you see these other cards. I think you're gonna be quite pleased with the difference. Now this first one is going to be coming from a bundle. Now I always buy in bundles when I can, because when you buy a bundle, you're gonna get both the stamps and the dies and you save 10% because who wants one without the other, right? It's called textured floral. Very, very pretty, but I love those solid dies in here as well. So let me show you this card. This is using the designer series paper called Inked Botanicals. That's here, lots of fun patterns in there. And I let the designer series paper dictate the colors. So this is Calypso Coral and Crushed Curry. And then I just use some old olive for those leaves. Die cut one of those pretty leaf patterns here. Unlike this card, which is horizontal, this one went vertical. So don't be afraid to experiment with this area that you have here because it opens up beautifully to reveal that designer series paper. And then I added some of my scraps here at the bottom with a stamped image. I didn't have the heart to throw away that little bit when it really adds a bunch to the card, doesn't it? All right, so here are the first two. And then I have one more for you. This is another bundle that's been immensely popular. Because if you're like me, maybe you struggle with putting together masculine cards. And it's called Gone Fishing. This has coordinating designer series paper that's called Let's Go Fishing. Now, I've got fishermen in my family, so I know that this is going to be a big hit that I can use all year round. Again, I use that designer series paper to my advantage. The stamps actually come two ways in this set, and I want to point that out to you. There's an outline, and then there's what we call a two-step image that can fill it. But for those of you that love to color, guess what? You've got outline images and you have the two-step fill, which makes this quite versatile. Fantastic for Father's Day, birthdays, retirement, graduation, you name it. And I decided to turn mine into a retirement card. So my flap is going to come up for that pretty designer series paper. And there we go. We have some more DSP here at the bottom with coordinating cardstock. Again, all those cutting dimensions are inside your project sheet. Now here's the best part. I'd love to know which one is your favorite. If you would do me a favor, pop right down now in the comments and let me know. Your feedback is so important as I design. I try to create something for everyone and I'd love to know your colors and layout ideas as well. So please share those with me. I've got some exciting things that you're gonna to need to know about because shopping in July just got a whole lot better with this. Stampin' Up! is having bonus days. They did this a number of years ago and they have brought it back and I am thrilled because when you shop between July 6th and the end of July the 31st, I almost forgot what month it was, you're going to earn bonus money. So for every order that you place, you're going to earn cash back to use in August. You're going to be able to find the information over on my website under shop and specials and you'll be able to get all those details there. That, again, begins on July 6th, so just a few days from now. I also want to make sure you know also what's coming next. It's this. It is the online exclusive. Stampin' Up! is introducing brand new product that is not in the catalog publication, only available online. That is actually going to start here in just a few days as well on the 7th. You're going to want to shop early for the best selection. These items sell out very, very quickly. This is just a teaser graphic of what's available. I don't know about you, but I got my little heart set on that trunk punch and that trunk image. And I think that's going to be super cute for fall and Christmas cards as well. So again, over on my website under shop, you'll be able to get those details beginning when that starts on July 7th. And if you haven't heard about Stamp Studio memberships, I want to tell you very quickly about it. Perhaps you love making cards for churches and nursing homes and schools and all types of not-for-profit organizations, and maybe you make them in mass. And perhaps maybe you teach them to other people, or you're even a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. My monthly membership program is $5 for the whole month, and you get a different card tutorial designed by me every Monday right to your inbox. 
you have full reign to copy not only the photo and the tutorial, but to do whatever you'd like with it, except sell it. Does not matter what country you live in. And I will tell you that these cards are beautiful and simple and duplicatable. But then I throw in some techniques every once in a while. Now, if you want a little bit more than that, then you're going to want to take a look at level two, which is everything in level one plus more. This is also going to give you a fun fold card every month, a discount in my PDF tutorial library, which is full of tutorials for you. And of course, we do five product giveaways every single month. Do me a favor. If you have enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It helps me immensely. Subscribe here to my YouTube channel by clicking the word subscribe and the word all so that YouTube will send you notifications when I'm here live or doing premieres. We want to make sure you're always in the know and mark your calendars. I'm coming back with you to a premiere on Monday on July 10th. I'll be live with you here again in the chat. I certainly hope that you will join me. Grace, thank you so much for moderating tonight. And thank you all for being here with me. It means so much to me. I look forward to seeing you then. Have a blessed day.